Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me for uh, today's webinar, Machine Learning Overview for Product Managers. So just before we begin, uh, some background about myself. Uh, so I'm Tal, I'm a Machine Learning Product Manager at Booking.com. I'm an industrial engineer, and I have a little bit more than eight years of experience in product and analytical roles. Um, here at Booking, I focus on content intelligence, machine learning products, uh, both in the domains of computer vision and uh, natural language processing techniques. What are we going to talk about today? First, we're going to discuss um, what is machine learning? What are the different types of models to work with? Um, afterwards, we'll understand, once we understand the overview of machine learning, we can deep dive into some real world machine learning applications. We will also discuss when not to use machine learning and what is it that we need to take into account uh, when working with machine learning in terms of resources and other aspects. So, what is machine learning? As you can see on the left, machine learning is a subdomain of artificial intelligence. Machine learning enables systems to learn and improve from experience without being explicitly told to. Um, so what is the difference be between machine learning and artificial intelligence? Or what are the type of applications that are artificial intelligence but not machine learning? So basically, Artificial intelligence is any technique which enables computers to mimic human behavior. So, for example, if you take hundreds of doctors um, and each spend hundreds of hours detailing correlation between symptoms and disease, and then you pack it up into a machine, then this is artificial intelligence. It mimics human behavior, um, but it's not machine learning. Machine learning actually gets the data and the answers, and it provides the rules, as opposed to classical programming, where you get the rules and the data, and then you provide the answers. So in this doctor's example, um, the data are the diseases, um, and the rules are the correlation between the connection between diseases and uh, the diagnosis. Um, and basically, machine learning is able to understand um, and define those patterns without being explicitly told to. Um, yeah. So artificial intelligence seems to have taken off around 1950s, while uh, uh, 1950, while machine learning wasn't that commonly used before late 1990 or a bit before. Um, and just to understand the hype around artificial intelligence in general, um, I think this graph actually explains it really well. Uh, the predicted revenues from artificial intelligence around 2025 are $126 billion. And you see the growth rate here um, as, as it seems very, very significant. Um, and another interesting thing, for example, is seeing a machine learning term uh, used in, uh, in Google search. And uh, this is an image from Google Trends, seeing the hype around machine learning uh, going forward from 2014 and on. So what are the different types of machine learning models or algorithms? There are four um, main uh, types of machine learning. Supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised, and reinforcement learning. And we'll deep dive into each and every one of them. So supervised models are the ones that use label data sets to train uh, models to classify or to predict outcome accurately. Uh, there are two types, regress regression and classification. Uh, classification models are the ones to classify data points within a given data set. And regression are a set of statistical processes to estimate the relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. Um, so the example, a good example of uh, supervised uh, learning is a uh, supervised model um, seems to be, you can see it here. Uh, the training data here is labeled. We already know what are the data, the data points that are apples and what are the data points that are bananas. And we feed it into the model. And based on that, the model will be able to classify this unseen and unlabeled data, uh, the green banana you can see here, and to classify it as banana based on the training data. So this is supervised model. Um, unsupervised models are basically ones that doesn't have this supervision. It doesn't have this label data um, that has in uh, supervised uh, models. Um, so different kinds of uh, unsupervised models are k-means, uh, PCA, principal component analysis, hierarchical clustering, anomaly detection, and more. 
Um, semi-supervised models are basically the one to use both labeled and unlabeled data. Um, it uses a small amount of labeled data and large amount of unlabeled data uh, to provide the benefits of, of both, basically. Um, the need here most of the time when using semi-supervised model uh, is to avoid the challenges of finding, of finding large scale or large amount of labeled data because sometimes we just don't have enough uh, of it. Reinforcement learning, uh, the most interesting uh, type of models, uh, in my opinion, are the ones that are able to take actions and learn through trial and error, much like teaching your dog how to play with a ball. Um, you give him a reward, a treat, uh, if he does something good, or you don't treat him at all, and this is the punishment. Uh, so this is reinforcement learning, basically. Um, and there are two approaches for reinforcement learning, uh, model-based and model-free. Uh, Model-based uh, are the ones that uh, use planning uh, in order to conduct the model, as opposed to simpler model-free methods that are explicitly trial and error techniques. So now let's discuss uh, some machine learning applications. Um, there are so many applications, but we'll discuss uh, a few of them uh, in the upcoming slides. So uh, the first one actually utilizes uh, reinforcement learning uh, techniques that we just discussed. Um, optimizing hero image, main image in hotels.com in Expedia's company. Uh, the technology here is to use multi-arm bandit, which is a reinforcement learning technique technique uh, to explore what is the best image to surface across their search results and in funnel products. Um, and by using multi arm bandit, they were able to drop the bounce rate and to improve some uh, main business KPIs. So it's an interesting example of how to use machine learning to boost conversion rate um, and to improve uh, business KPIs. Another interesting example is uh, Google Maps uh, traffic prediction. So basically, Google were able to improve their ETA prediction significantly by using graph neural networks. Um, so it was an interesting, uh, it's an interesting use case of uh, using uh, neural networks in, in, in real life. Um, and by the way, in the near future, Google plans to further advance uh, more of their AI uh, applications uh, by implementing voice assistant and creating augmented reality uh, maps uh, in real time. So, so that's cool. Um, another uh, machine learning application is image classification for search relevance. So basically, the capability, as you can see on the left, is to understand within an image um, what is it that we see in the image. Uh, for example, here we know when we see that the woman wear boots and a dress, and we can use it to tag it for the search engine. Uh, tags from image classification can increase uh, the number of product attributes and therefore increase their discoverability uh, in the search engine. Um, by the way, there, are sim there is a similar uh, application on eBay that uh, they released the Shop the Celebrity Look, where you can get uh, a celebrity image with a given set of clothes. And based on this image, you can shop the exact look on eBay. Um, so this, this is a nice application of image classification techniques. Um, there are similar images for image search uh, used by Pinterest and by many other applications. Um, and it's basically done by uh, embedding the image, getting a vector representation of the image um, and the, comparing it to vector representations of other given set of images. And based on that, to understand what are the similarity of images. Um, so in this example, it's used for visual search and uh, for other, uh, it, it's used in other varieties of uh, machine learning application. Another interesting example is uh, messages highlights by Slack. So Slack uses machine learning um, and NLP uh, to move more relevant messages to the top. Um, basically Slack uh, claims that a user is bugged more than 70 times a day uh, with uh, messages on Slack, um, and they want to help the user to focus a bit more, so they surface the most relevant or highlighted uh, messages um, in the product uh, using uh, NLP techniques. So then we can ask ourselves, is ML, is machine learning, is the solution for everything? So the short and the long answer is no. Um, there are several things that machine learning can't provide you, and it's important to be familiar with the limitation of uh, machine learning. 
So when not to use ML, when not to use machine learning? ML, ML fails to deliver its value mainly when the problem can be solved by rule-based coding. Um, so when you can solve um, the problem with less complex uh, solution, don't go with uh, machine learning. So for example, if you have an e-commerce site and you want to avoid listing illegal goods uh, like uh, guns or adult products, and you already have a list of keywords uh, for those products that you don't want to use, that you don't want to surface uh, online, then you don't need to develop a classification model to predict which kind of goods should or shouldn't be listed. You can just use the keyword-based solution. Um, yeah. Another reason not to use machine learning is when you just don't have enough data or label data. So, for example, if you want to detect fake reviews, uh, but you don't really know from previous, from history, what are those uh, fake reviews um, uh, to indicate and based on that predict uh, future fake reviews, then you can't really use machine learning because uh, you don't have the label data. Uh, or, at or at least it's a bit more challenging to use machine learning for that. Another reason not to use machine learning is where is when you have non-stationary data, um, when your data is just not a predictor for the future. For example, we saw it very well uh, in COVID times uh, when, for example, predicting stock returns in the presence of COVID-19 is a bit problematic because your history data, uh, let's say from 2002, uh, is not a predicted, uh, predictable uh, data set for the future because the current situation, COVID situation, is a bit different and not something that we saw in the past. Uh, another reason why not to use machine learning is when you need 100% accuracy. So if it's a life or death, death situation, you might need to combine both machine learning um, application and maybe human interaction in order to ensure 100% accuracy. Um, another uh, final reason not to use machine learning is when you need high level of explainability. If your product product requires explainability, understand and make and help other and others understand why the machine learning took its decision the way it took, uh, then machine learning is, you have a challenge there. Because um, while we may understand the underlying mechanics behind the model, it's still not very clear how the models reach their decision. Uh, there are some techniques like feature importance and uh, correlation metrics that uh, can help us understand, um, but it's still not very, uh, but not very clear how machine learning um, product uh, and produce uh, the decision. Uh, so it really depends on the product. Um, so just before we continue, I want to review the machine learning lifecycle, just to understand while working with machine learning, uh, to understand what are the life cycle, what are the different steps required to kick off machine learning uh, product. So the first uh, phase is data collection. Uh, then you need to pre-process the data and clean it. Obviously, without data, you don't have a model, so you need to collect the right data and then clean it. Um, data cleaning and pre-processing seem to be small steps, um, but actually these are very important um, and long um, uh, steps along the uh, process. Um, and without the proper cleaning, uh, you might not get the machine learning results you uh, desire. Um, then you have the feature engineering. You basically need to engineer uh, your data in order to maximize uh, the prediction uh, accuracy. Uh, you engineer the data set in a way that you think will be most useful for the model to uh, provide its prediction. Uh, so, for example, data engineering example could be if you have uh, daily temperature data in uh, New York. Uh, engineering the data uh, could be, for example, taking the maximum temperature on a weekly basis and feed it into the model. You engineer the, the data in a way that you think that will be most useful for the model uh, and for the use case, the specific use case that you're working on. Then you have the model training and validation. So here is the domain expertise uh, of uh, the machine learning scientist, the data scientist. Um, and then you have the model testing, deployment, and maintenance and improvements um, rounds. So this is the overall uh, 
machine learning lifecycle in short. Um, and just before we start, um, I want to review what is it that we need to take into account in terms, in terms of resources and, and other aspects. So the first thing is uh, production <laughs> requirements, um, latencies, latency issues. Some projects require batch prediction, some doesn't need it. Um, you need to take into account what is your um, requirements on production and then see if your machine learning infrastructure can support it. Uh, for example, scaling up could be problematic. If a model works on a small environment, it doesn't mean um, that it will work anywhere and everywhere on uh, on larger scale. Um, and you need to check it before, um, to check that you have the right infrastructure in order to be able to scale up in a, in an, in a healthy manner. Um, this is the first aspect. The second one is um, you need to think if you want to build from scratch, or take off the shelf models. Um, so there are so many uh, third parties offerings like uh, Google Vision API and, and AWS. Uh, and there are so many um, of the shelf products that you can use. Um, so you, you need to think with the, with the team and according to the use case, whether the model should be built from scratch or using an off-the-shelf model. Uh, there are also pre-trained models, so you don't even need to train your model uh, by yourself. But of course, it depends on the use case. And sometimes if you have a very specific use, use case, a very custom-made uh, need, then you might need to build from scratch or to combine some um, several uh, third parties uh, off-the-shelf capabilities. Uh, the third thing I think it's important to uh, to know is uh, what team is required. So basically, you need to build a team. You need data engineers and data scientists and an analyst sometimes um, to understand and the evaluation of the model. Uh, and of course, you need backend and frontend if needed. Depends on your application. Um, another thing to take into account is that things can change over time. Uh, so you need modern monitoring because the fact that the model is uh, performing well now uh, doesn't mean it, it will perform well um, in a year from now or two years from now. So you need to continuously monitor your model and maybe even retrain it uh, once in a while to make sure that it's up to date. Uh, and the last thing is the cost. So basically, there are uh, infrastructure costs for deploying a model, cloud compute, data storage, integration costs, data pipelines development, everything around cost. It can be pretty costly to um, to uh, product uh, machine learning uh, based uh, product. Um, so you just need to take into account and be familiar with the costs uh, before going into a machine learning um, product uh, development. Um, so just to to wrap it up. Uh, machine learning is a powerful tool. Um, it's up to us, um, machine learning product managers and, and everyone that else that involved, uh, to make sure that it solves real world problem and have a clear problem, hypothesis and success metrics. Um, and, and only then understand if machine learning is indeed uh, the solution for us. Um, yeah. So, the main and the key takeaways from this talk are what are the machine learning model types that we, we reviewed, supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement learning, semi-supervised. Uh, we discussed machine learning applications, example, if it's a ETA prediction or image classification, for example. Uh, we also talked about when not to use machine learning, when you just don't have the data, for example, or if the data is non-stationary. Um, and lastly, the required resources you need to take into account. So thank you for your time. I hope you found it useful. And please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or um, additional uh, thoughts. Thanks.